the second type of positive interaction is called proto cooperation. Even here we see a situation where both the partners are benefited. Both the partners are benefited, but the partners are not in continuous contact. Both of them live separately, but whenever they come together, they enter into an association where both of them are benefited. Therefore, this is a facultative, facultative mutualism. The previous one that we saw is obligatory mutualism. This is facultative mutualism. A very interesting example for this would be the association between the association between hermit crab and sea anemone. Hermit crab is a crustacean. It is a crustacean, a kind of crab. But the interesting situation is this crab finds an empty molluscan shell, finds an empty molluscan shell and spends most of the time inside the shell. For this reason it gets the name hermit crab. Most often it finds a sea anemone. Sea anemone is a cnidarian acylentrate with stinging cells. So as the hermit crab moves around, it finds a sea anemone, pick up, picks up that sea anemone, attaches that sea anemone to the shell inside which it is living. Once the sea anemone is attached, the two now enter into a mutually beneficial association both of them are benefited. Sea anemone is a sedentary animal. It is incapable of locomotion. Very rarely it can move but most of the time it is found attached to a substratum. When it is attached to the shell inside which hermit crab is present, wherever the hermit crab moves it gets a free transport therefore it is exposed to a variety of food. What is the benefit for hermit crab? The stinging cells of the herb sea anemone can protect the weak animal, the hermit crab, if there is an attempt by another animal to kill the crab. 
so hermit crab gets protection sea anemone gets transported food if the sea anemone gets detached it can live independently without the sea anemone the hermit can crab can live independently but whenever they come together they enter into an association where both of them are benefited similarly there are a group of birds called oxpeckers oxpeckers you would have seen a few birds sitting on cattle occasionally trying to feed on the lice and other parasites that may be present in the skin of cattle such birds are called oxpeckers these birds can forage independently ox can live without these birds but when they come together when they enter into an association the ox or the cattle derives the benefit of getting all the lice and other parasites on its skin removed by the bird the bird gets the food so mutually they are benefited similarly you would have seen an association between crocodiles and birds the bird is called pluvianus pluvianus this bird generally feeds on le leeches and other tiny animals in marshy areas where the crocodiles also live most often what happens is while feeding a few leeches may enter into the buccal cavity of the crocodiles these birds foraging for leeches and other tiny animals sometimes when the crocodile opens its jaws sit there and remove the leeches and other animals that are harming the crocodile crocodile is benefited because it is getting rid of the leeches the birds are benefited because they are getting the food so mutually mutually they are benefited but crocodile can live alone on its own the birds also can forage on their own whenever they enter into an association they are beneficial to each other